50 crazy facts about rock music everyone should know. Nine Inch Nails' Trent Reznor was the final resident of the infamous 150 Cielo Drive house before it was torn down. The house was the site of the Manson family murders of Sharon Tate and her friends. Reznor recorded most of his career-defining album, The Downward Spiral, there. Tom Petty was so popular, his record label wanted to charge one dollar more for his 1981 album, Hard Promises, than the standard 898, but they backed down after he threatened to name the album 898. When writing Paradise City, members of Guns N' Roses had to vote on the second line because Slash wanted it to be where the girls are fat and they've got big tits. In 1957, Little Richard saw a bright red fireball flying across the sky, which he took as a sign from God to repent from performing secular music and his wild lifestyle at the time. The fireball actually was the launching of the first artificial Earth satellite, Sputnik 1. Carlos Santana believed he was contacted by the angel Metatron and told how to create his next album, Supernatural. Even though he was probably on acid at the time, it went on to win 12 Grammys, including Album of the Year, went 15 times platinum, charted at number one in 10 countries, and sold 30 million copies. On August 26, 1990, Stevie Ray Vaughan described a disturbing dream to his bandmates in which he witnessed his own funeral. The next day, he tragically died in a helicopter crash. Doc McGee, longtime manager of Bon Jovi and other popular bands, was convicted of trafficking 40 thousand pounds or 20 tons of marijuana. After John Bon Jovi penned a six-page handwritten letter to the judge, McGee only received probation. The Animals frontman Eric Burden claimed he inspired the Beatles' line, I am the Eggman, after telling John Lennon about his fondness of breaking eggs over naked women's bodies. Radiohead frontman Tom York is on the cover of an Iranian sex manual. In 1968, Elton John attempted to take his life but was discovered by Bernie Topin. Upon finding Elton's head in the oven, resting on a pillow with the gas on low and all the windows open, Bernie couldn't stop laughing. This event inspired the hit single, Someone Saved My Life Tonight. When Grateful Dead singer Jerry Garcia died, an autopsy was done. In his large intestine, the medical examiner found a bottle cap, a pipe screen, a mascara brush, and a a small brass key. Johnny Winter's manager had been slowly lowering his methadone dosage for three years without Johnny's knowledge, and as a result, Johnny was completely clean of his 40-year heroin addiction for over eight months before being told he was finally drug-free. Keith Relf of the Yardbirds, the band that featured Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, and Jimmy Page, died of electrocution from an improperly grounded guitar. Chris Cornell wrote Black Hole Sun after the tune just came to his head while driving at 4 a.m. He wrote it down and polished it in a span of 15 minutes and wrote the lyrics the next morning. James Hetfield of Metallica went to rehab in 2001 because he was addicted to chocolate. In 1990, Chuck Berry was sued by 59 women because, at his Missouri restaurant, The Southern Air, he had had hidden cameras installed in the ladies' room. He managed to avoid charges and paid out a settlement of $1.2 million. In 1973, the members of Led Zeppelin gave drummer John Bonham a Harley Davidson for his 25th birthday, which he promptly rode up and down the hallways of his hotel, causing thousands of dollars in damage. The next day, he wrote a check for the damages and said they can keep the bike. Joe Strummer married his first wife at the age of 23 after he was paid $120. She was a South African woman who needed a marriage to obtain British citizenship. He used the money to purchase his signature Fender Telecaster. The founding members of the Allman Brothers Band, Dwayne Allman and Barry Oakley, each died in a motorcycle crash, a year apart, in the same town, only three blocks apart. Led Zeppelin singer Robert Plant had three children with his wife at the time, Maureen Wilson, before divorcing in 1983, and then had a child with Maureen's sister, Shirley Wilson, making his kids both cousins and siblings. Eric Clapton grew up thinking his mother was his sister, his grandmother was his mother, and his step-grandfather was his father. This is because he was born to an unmarried teenage girl and, in order to save face, the girl's parents raised him as their own. The Semolina Pilchard mentioned in I Am the Walrus is a reference to Scotland Yard Drug Squad detective Norman Nobby Pilcher, who led a midnight drug raid on John Lennon's London flat in October 1968. He also targeted musicians like Mick Jagger, Brian Jones, Eric Clapton, and Donovan prior to that.
Tom Petty wrote, Listen to her heart, in response to Ike Turner hitting on his wife. Waylon Jennings and Willie Nelson wrote, Good hearted woman, in response to Ike Turner hitting his wife. Tom Waits auditioned for the part of Mr. Brown in Reservoir Dogs. Quentin Tarantino had Waits read the Madonna speech, which famously argues that the song, Like a Virgin, is about a large penis, just so he could hear Waits say those lines. Van Morrison was once so upset at his record label for the crappy contract that he recorded 31 crappy songs on purpose to fulfill his contractual obligations. They were released in 1994 on a compilation called Pay and Dues. During a live performance in 1965, the Kinks guitarist Dave Davies asked drummer Mick Avery, why don't you get your c*** out and play the snare with it? It'll probably sound better. In response, Avery knocked Davies unconscious with a cymbal and then fled the venue, thinking he'd killed him. Frontman of Aerosmith, Steven Tyler, estimates that he spent at least five to six million dollars on cocaine in his lifetime. After Sinead O'Connor covered Nothing Compares to You by Prince, he summoned O'Connor to his house to tell her to stop swearing in interviews. When she told him to F off, he punched and attacked her, and she had to escape from his house. The Kiss Casket, dubbed by Gene Simmons as the ultimate Kiss collectible, is a coffin with a design that features pictures of the band playing, lots of fire, and a massive KISS logo on the front. Pantera guitarist Dimebag Daryl was buried in one, along with Van Halen's Bumblebee guitar. The song I Love Rock and Roll, made famous by Joan Jett and the Blackhearts in 1982, was actually written by Alan Merrill and first recorded by his band, The Arrows, in 1975. In 1985, MTV ran a contest based on John Mellencamp's song, Pink Houses, where they gave away a pink house. Unfortunately, the house was built on a toxic waste dump in Indiana, so not wanting to poison his fans, MTV were forced to buy another house. Also included was a garage full of Hawaiian punch. Pete Townsend of The Who was put on the vendor registry after he used his credit card to download from the internet, which he claimed he did as research. The classic hit Barracuda by the band Heart was written as a response to a publicity stunt which rumored that Ann Wilson and her sister Nancy were having an incestuous lesbian affair. In 1985, as the artist showed up to participate in recording We Are The World for USA for Africa, Stevie Wonder informed each of them that if the song was not finished in one take, he and Ray Charles would be driving everyone home. Crazy Little Thing Called Love by Queen was meant as a tribute to Elvis Presley, and it took Freddie Mercury 10 minutes to write while taking a bath. A Pearl Jam fan who believed that Eddie Vedder had fathered her children and the subject of the Pearl Jam song, Lucan, drove her truck into Eddie Vedder's house at 50 miles per hour. Vedder's life was saved by a wall he built around his house due to stalker issues. Bob Marley gave a credit on the song No Woman No Cry to one of his friends who ran a soup kitchen to ensure the royalty checks would keep it open. Kurt Cobain met Courtney Love at a Butthole Surfers concert. Dave Grohl acted as Kurt's wingman, finding out that they shared common interests. Later, Cobain invited the Butthole Surfers to tour with him. The Rolling Stones would never have been formed if Keith Richards and Mick Jagger hadn't accidentally met at a train station in 1961. Richards struck up a conversation with Jagger about the blues records that he was carrying. After spending millions of dollars on cocaine, Stevie Nicks had a hole in her septum the size of a five-cent piece. A plastic surgeon urged her to stop if she wanted her nose to remain on her face. The first rap song to top Dumber One on the Billboard charts was Blondie's Rapture, sung by Debbie Harry, a white female. It was also the first rap music video to appear on MTV. Jim Morrison of The Doors once tried to drunkenly hit on Janis Joplin. Turned off by his rude and obnoxious advances, Joplin hit him over the head with a bottle of Southern Comfort and knocked him out clean. The next day, Morrison said she was terrific and asked for her number. Grace Slick of Jefferson Airplane was invited to the White House for a tea party in 1969 and planned to spike President Nixon's tea with 600 micrograms of LSD. The plan was thwarted by White House security, 